In 2006, the Minister of Environment for British Columbia requested that the CRD begin planning to upgrade its wastewater treatment. The core area affected includes the municipalities of Colwood, Esquimalt, Langford, Oak Bay, Saanich, Victoria, and View Royal. On June 30, 2009, the CRD must update the Minister of Environment on the progress to date, and on December 31st, an amendment to the existing liquid waste management plan will be finalized. Planning and construction of this wastewater treatment system is expected to take 10 years to complete, with an estimated cost of between $1.2 and $2 billion. The new wastewater treatment plan must take into account population and infrastructure growth up to 2065. Currently, the core area is being served by screening facilities located at Clover Point and Macaulay Point. Wastewater is screened to remove solids larger than 6 millimeters and then discharged into the Strait of Juan de Fuca. The screenings are hauled by trucks to the Heartland landfill and buried. Outside of the core area, the CRD operates a number of sewage treatment facilities. The Saanich Peninsula Wastewater Treatment Plant is one example of secondary treatment. Here, the wastewater also goes through a 6 mm screen and screenings are hauled to Heartland. But then, the screened wastewater is sent to a covered primary clarifier, or settling pond, where 60% of the remaining solids settle. The other 40% stays suspended in the liquid, which flows into the aeration tanks. Here, organic matter is digested by natural microorganisms. This reduces nutrients and oxygen demand that can be harmful to marine environments. The wastewater then moves to a secondary clarifier pond, where fine solids settle out. The water is then discharged through an outfall to the ocean. This treated water can have other uses, which we will look at later. What about the sludge that has been separated from the wastewater? It is moved first onto a gravity belt thickener and then passed through a rotary press to be further dewatered. Every week, this facility ships 60 tons of sludge to the Heartland landfill. A further process performed at this facility uses a thermal blender to heat the dewatered sludge to 70 degrees Celsius. Lime is also added at this stage. The mixture is then pasteurized, creating Class A biosolids. This product can be used as a residential fertilizer. Another CRD wastewater treatment facility, located in Ganges on Salt Spring Island, is an example of a tertiary membrane system. Here, wastewater is initially run through a very fine one millimeter screen. Unlike the peninsula system, clarifiers or settling ponds are not used. The screened water is agitated to keep the particles suspended and then aerated before filtering through a membrane system. This is one of the six membrane cassettes lifted out of the tank. Each cassette contains thousands of membrane strands. Each strand is a polymer tube with tiny 0.05 millimeter openings. The water is sucked through these openings, leaving behind the remaining solids to be taken to a landfill. The membrane filtered water is then passed by ultraviolet lights to kill bacteria. Currently, this water is being discharged into the ocean. The CRD is exploring technologies to recover wastewater components for reuse and for energy purposes. The following are some of the options we are considering for the new wastewater treatment facilities in the core area. Biosolid energy and resource recovery. We've talked about Class A biosolids, which have been heated and pasteurized to be used as a fertilizer. What about the less processed, dewatered sludge? The first 10 years of wastewater treatment will result in almost 200,000 tons of sludge. Is burying it at the Heartland landfill the only option? Some facilities use additional fuel to burn sludge. This can produce gases, heat, and electricity. 
The remaining ash may be used as a soil nutrient or in cement manufacturing. Biogas Recovery At the Anasis Island plant in Vancouver, they are capturing the gas, which is produced when bacteria digest the sludge. The anaerobic or airless method used here stirs and heats the sludge to encourage digestion. Digestion reduces the volatile solids in the sludge and at the same time releases gas. The captured gas operates six generators, providing 40% of the plant's electrical demands. The cooling water for the generators is also used for heating purposes within the facility. If biogas is cleaned, it can be converted to natural gas for use as a vehicle fuel. There is the potential to power up to 65 transit buses and offset $5.4 million per year of fuel costs. Heat recovery. Wastewater that exits homes and buildings travels at an average temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Heat can be recovered from wastewater through heat exchangers, which transfer heat from wastewater to a refrigerant. The Saanich Peninsula Wastewater Treatment Plant has received federal funding to help heat the nearby Panorama Recreation Center, the Center for Plant Health, an elementary school, and the plant itself. Recovery of heat from wastewater can be effective up to one kilometer from each plant. Pressure energy recovery. The flow energy of wastewater can be harnessed and used as a power source. On the Saanich Peninsula, there are plans to install a micro turbine at the outfall to produce electricity. A turbine or pump can be installed inside wastewater pipes to capture the energy of the flowing wastewater. The topography of the CRD core area is favorable for flow energy recovery. Water reclamation and reuse. There are many opportunities within the CRD to reclaim and reuse wastewater. The current technologies of choice for water reclamation facilities are membrane technology and ultraviolet disinfection, which we saw in Ganges. These have a proven ability to remove contaminants and pathogens and are in use in many wastewater facilities around the world. Two of the biggest draws on the regional water supply are landscape irrigation and toilet flushing. Reuse of wastewater for these needs could be applied to new or redeveloped areas. A dual water distribution system would be needed to supply both potable and this reclaimed water to communities. Use for farmland is limited due to strict guidelines. Phosphorus recovery. Phosphorus is found in wastewater as part of a compound called struvite. This compound, when not removed, can be responsible for clogging pipes and pumps. But phosphorus is also a non-renewable resource. At the Lulu Island plant in Vancouver, UBC has developed a technique to remove this compound, to be used for river enhancement for fisheries and as a fertilizer for agriculture and golf courses. The price of this resource is continually rising as the world's supplies are depleted. If feasible, the goal of the CRD is to ensure that wastewater facilities are carbon neutral. Plants will be designed so as to minimize energy consumption during construction and subsequent operation. As well, wherever possible, energy and resources will be recovered from the sludge and effluent. <laughs>